park for three nights. This is in southeastern Kentucky, and it's over 400 miles of mapped underground tunnels. It's an underground wonderland. This trail is called Sand Cave Trail. It's a very short distance, but it marks the location of a spot where a, um, a cave explorer died. And it says for 16 days, the world focused its attention on this remote corner as hundreds of people labored day and night to unsuccessfully reach this cave explorer. He died 60 feet under the ground just at the end of this pathway. It says that the atmosphere was like a carnival when they were trying to recover this, this guy out of this cave. Oh my gosh, that must have been where they went in. So this is our first look at the cave system here. Could you imagine climbing down in there and going in that cave by yourself? I can hear water dripping from in there. And then look, it goes way up there. So this is pretty deep. I wonder how far back he was in there. This says an estimated crowd of 10,000 people gathered around when they were trying to get him out. Look at this picture of the old cars lining the roads. This is really pretty through here. Beautiful. I read that we really have to watch out for poison ivy, poison oak, and ticks. And we did ask the ranger when we came in if ticks were an issue, and he said yes, that they were pretty heavy. And it is May 5th, 14th today. Yep. Is this some kind of a poison oak or poison ivy? I see the leaves of three. They could not pull his body out, according to that information. So I guess his, if they never found his body, I guess his skeleton. Well, they found his body. He was pinned. But they didn't pull him out? They couldn't pull him out. He would not, because a massive amount of rock that, that fell on his leg, he was pinned. Well, this is our first night here. We've only been here a couple hours, but we drove into town and did a few things. And um, Fred's got a tour scheduled for 9 15 in the morning so we're going to see if the visitor center is still open and ask them where we can find the bats as they come in and out of the caves i've seen some videos where people are standing there and like thousands of bats are like either coming into the cave in the evening or going out of the cave at, in the morning and well we just asked the rangers and they said that um in the springtime the bats actually leave the caves and they congregate in the forest. So there's no one particular spot in any kind of cave entrance where you can see the bats coming in and out. But they said any lights around uh, where there's a lot of insects that you should be able to see the bats flying around the lights trying to, you know, attack the insects. We'll be back at that visitor center in the coming days, but we just wanted to find out, you know, where Fred needed to report for the cave tours, which is right there at the visitor center. So this is still our first night, and we went down this Green River Road, and there's this ferry that you have to take to cross the river. Interesting way to cross the river rather than to build a bridge. You can see these cables that it's connected to. I just read a sign that said ferries were a very common way in the past to cross rivers and that uh, very few ferries are still in use today. So check out this canoe launch. I guess you can call these people and they'll bring you canoes. Put your canoe on here and it just goes down to the river. So the name of this company is Mammoth Cave Adventures and they said they called them and um, they dropped them off and at one point and now they're picking them up here. They said they were on the river for three hours. It was a lot of fun. Well I just asked the guy if they allowed dogs on the canoes and he said yes. So we could do that and take our two little puppies. This canoe launch is at the Echo River Spring Trail on the Green Ferry. It's right by that ferry crossing, right next to it. 
It's day two. Fred just came back from doing the extended historic tour, and now I'm on my way to do a tour. Fred, what did you think about the um, extended historic tour? I enjoyed it. A lot of good information. It was about two hours long, right? Over two hours. About two and a half hours. And the cave itself, once you walk down into the cave, it has a very high ceiling. It's uh, uh, very interesting how, as to how high the ceiling is. And the guy, the ranger guide, advised that the uh, reason the cave was formed was from an underground river over thousands of years, slicing through the limestone, cutting away and forming that cave. So you've been on cave tours before. How was this one compared to some of the other cave tours you've been on? Much larger. Really? Much larger cave system. Were the guides pretty informative? Yes. Were there a lot of people on the tour? There's probably uh, 35 people in my group. So you could hear the the narrator pretty well? Well, you had to, when she stopped to talk about a, a uh, site, you had to get up close to hear her. And there were some real tight passageways that we went through, very tight. So what, system. if you're a large, obese person, you might have trouble getting through? You would not get through. Really? No, you would not get through. Well, Fred just dropped me off, and so I'm on my way into the visitor center, and it's the Wandering Woods Tour that I am doing. Well, I'm here about an hour early, so I think I'm just going to tour all of these exhibits. This woman lived almost 90 years old. Um, her name was Frances Benjamin Johnston. She was born in 1864. She was the first person to um, capture in a photograph these underground caves. Um, this story about her is truly impressive. You know, I was wondering why all of these caves formed in this area of southeastern Kentucky. And this area is known as a sinkhole plain. So as water and snow would form on the top and the pressure would cause these sinkholes forming these underground rivers and all of these caves emerged. When you push the button and look at this, there's sinkholes everywhere. This exhibit talks about how 10 to 20 foot floods are common in the lowest levels of the cave and occur several times each year. And then it says that they also have 40 and 50 foot floods. However, those are pretty rare. Nearly 4,000 years ago, the first explorers, prehistoric Indians, ventured into the cave for minerals, for flint, and perhaps for spiritual reasons. You can easily spend an hour or more going through this interpretive tour. This is pretty interesting. It's a timeline of the cave. It says 5,000 to 4,500 years ago, uh, American Indians were exploring Mammoth Cave. And then in 1812, the cave was bought by Kentucky resident Charles Wilkins. Um, And it just goes on all these events that happened in the cave's history. This is the Mammoth Cave Hotel. The photo was taken in 1915. So five minutes before your tour departs, uh, you meet at either Shelter A or Shelter B and they announced that over the loudspeaker. So I'm going to Shelter B. So for the Wandering Woods tour, we're gonna get on this bus to go to our cave entrance. We started cave tourism in the year 1816, 207 years ago now. And at first- So this is pretty cool. This Wandering Woods tour actually takes you to an old theme park. This Wandering Woods, uh, was this guy's idea he put a couple of million dollars into it and he went bankrupt and the national park took this over the woods in mammoth cave national park are really pretty they said that a long time ago this area was a community a thriving community and when the national park bought it 
the CCC came and planted millions of trees and restored the woods. It's all limestone. <laughs> Everything you'll see is limestone rock. Except if you go towards the Mammoth Cave region, over towards the, uh, 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 the visitor center, you'll start to see another kind of rock layer. Something that's a little bit more brownish, a little bit more gritty. It's up sandstone and shale. While this limestone is perfect for making caves, nine out of 10 caves in the world are limestone caves. What makes Mam the Mammoth Cave system so different is that sandstone and shale. Yeah, you can feel the cool air coming out of the cave. Oh, wow. It's pretty, it is pretty tight and you do have to duck down to get in. Yeah, you really have to duck down. <laughs> Look at this. But what are the formations that hang tight to the ceiling? Stalactites, exactly. What about the ones that might reach the ceiling? Black mites. What do you think we call them when they grow together? Oh. Exactly, that's what we call them. <laughs> Up on the ceiling, right above Ranger Brooks right there, you see this kind of formation right here. That is a formation that is most commonly called Excalibur, or even the elephant's ear. But the actual name, what kind of formation that is, is usually called a cave drapery. So this is the end of the cave. It's like Batman. Oh, that's cool. Show that to Sammy. between the 1880s and the 1920s. And it was called the Kentucky Cave Wars. This is where local cave owners, uh, or even just local farmers, they started seeing Mammoth Cave was making a lot of money, taking people into a dark hole in the ground. So many of them with a sinkhole in their property, they said, well, what stops me from opening up this hole and having my own cave tours as well? Okay, so right outside the visitor center, there's this little ice cream and snack shop. And this ice cream is very good. It's called the Bourbon Crunch. I highly recommend it. Did you get this sir? I got it at that little ice cream store right there. Fred came to pick me up in time to partake in some of this ice cream. It's pretty good, huh? Mm. So as I was saying a few minutes ago when we were on that tour, this area in the National Park was home to like four or 500 different families. And they had uh, several churches in here and this church is still here. Um, this is the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church. I don't think you could go in here, but this does not look like a lock, does it? Oh my gosh. Very odd odor in here. This church was built in 1827. Some of the glass in the windows is broken. You would think they'd get that fixed and this back door was open. There's a Bible up here, people leaving money. Beautiful. Wonder how many church services have been held in here over the years. And then over here is supposed to be a gravesite of Carl Floyd. And Fred just told me when he was at the visitor center earlier today, he bought a book on Carl Floyd. Did you find his grave? It's William Floyd Collins. 
trapped in Sand Cave. He's the one that discovered Crystal Cave. He was the greatest cave explorer ever known. Hmm. Most people in this cemetery were born in the 1800s. What a beautiful little cemetery. Oh, peaceful. Beautiful. Amazing piece of Americana right there in that old church. According to the sign I read back there at the other cemetery, there are a lot of graves out here in these woods. Really? Yeah. calling for help. So you would have to run back up to the church, flag someone down. Yeah. <laughs> run back the two two or three miles. Oh my gosh. I hope we haven't made a mistake coming down this road. It's supposed to be a day camping area or day picnic area down here. There's a river. Right oh there's there. a river right there? Yeah. Okay, so, so we are at the end. This is some kind of a little bay use area. It says no camping allowed. Um, there's somebody else back here. Oh, here's a little dock. All right, we're going to go check out this river. What? We got these ramps to lower canoes and kayaks down and to retrieve them. Is this the Green River, do you think? I think it is. It's a pretty river. It is. Pretty river. Looks different than the Peace River in Florida, doesn't it? Peace River is a river that's near our house. We need to depart before the moonshiners arrive and commandeer our vehicle for that purpose. <laughs> So this road we're on is a very narrow winding road and uh, on either side of it is some pretty deep ravines and we've talking about it and it, it, they're not ravines these are hollers in Kentucky all these big ravine type things on the side of the road that's what they call a holler so down there in the holler so Fred said he thinks I need to be certain about the definition of a holler. What do you think it might be? I think it's an area that's like a little valley that you could drive into. I don't know. Unless we'll, what they were in West Virginia. We're gonna have to uh, research exactly what a holler is. Well, it's day three for us here and Fred just dropped me off at the visitor center. I am going to be doing the extended historic tour today. It's a little bit over two hours I think. Um, Fred did this tour yesterday. He said it was really good. This will take us inside Mammoth Cave. Now descending down into the cave to a, a depth of 310 feet below this elevation which means at some point we got to come 310 feet up. We're going into lower and lower passages that are much smaller. We're going to go from like a five six foot wide trail in the main cave to more of a single file trail in those lower sections of the cave. And that's also, we're gonna, we're gonna hit most of the stairs on this tour. We've got over, four, over 500 stairs. It's like 540 stairs across the tour. Uh, we're gonna have a vast majority of those in the last mile of our two and a quarter mile trip. So we're turning the corner, coming around to the entrance of the cave and you can feel the temperature really starting to drop. Extended historic and not just a regular historic tour. We get to see just a little bit more cave but also try to do this tour a little bit differently than I would a normal historic tour. On a normal historic tour, uh, we'll have double the size of, of the group that we have here today. So we usually have between 100 and 120 people on that tour. Because we go through multiple levels of the cave. And that's what the cave is like, it's multiple levels. 
levels stacked on top of each other, and it's just like a big three-dimensional maze. And the whole thing, 426 miles is what the official total is right now, uh, fits in a seven mile by seven mile service area. So in the very early 1800s, they used these pipes to transport water to and from this cave. There was a mining operation here. So it actually helped our country in the War of 1812. And they said that there was about 80 or 90 slaves that were leased to the owners to come in here and do this work because it was hard work and no, no one else really wanted to do it. It was very important. And this cave preserves this history so well because there's no water leaking down. This big boulder here is called the coffin. You can see the walls up here. This is all prehistoric work where they were chipping gypsum. They weren't all quite like this. Some of them. This is the tuberculation hut. Uh, some of them uh, were more like canvas tents and stuff that they constructed kind of, kind of more hastily. It was kind of like an experimentation to cure tuberculosis back in the early 1800s, which obviously didn't work. Folks that do the mapping these days, uh, no end in sight is what they like to say. Uh, I've heard folks in that group that are geologists, hydrologists that look at the caves in this area, the area you know, this, what could potentially connect to Mammoth Cave that we already know about based on water flow and in the directions that passages are, are going in. And they say a safe bet, if, they, if they're given enough time, is one day we'll be here on tour telling you there's 600 miles of cave. And they say there's a potential, a possibility that one day, given enough time, and I'll, I will never see this in my lifetime, but uh, they say that there's a possibility there could well be a thousand miles of cave. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty tight right here. So this is pretty awesome. Definitely need to do the extended historic tour. Side saddle pit, that's called. I think he said this was like 150 foot deep. There's the first little bit of water that we've seen here in the cave. It's called Bottomless Pit. And you can't see the bottom, but the guide was talking earlier about how the conditions down here are so dry, except for what we just saw, that when people would die down here a long time ago, their bodies would actually become mummified um, they would still have their skin and their hair hundreds of years later. Apparently that was one of the big attractions in the 1800s that you could go come see the Mammoth Cave Mummies. Okay, so here you can see the ground terrain is changing a little bit. It's a little uneven. He said if you're claustrophobic, don't come on this tour. And I'm at the pretty much the back of the line right now. You can see all the people. Mm -hmm. so I have to turn to the side to get through. This is very narrow right here. I'd say about 18 inches. You have to turn to the side and bend over. <laughs> You have to step up and crouch down at the same time. Oh, my goodness. Really crouching. Look at this. Holy cow. I don't want to hit my head. What allows for the world's longest cave, which is what you're in right now, 426 miles puts us way above and beyond anybody else. Second longest cave is about 250 miles mapped. That's in, uh, in Mexico, in the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico. This room uh, is, is one of the rooms that floods. 
and there's bands here on this post that show the high water marks. I guess it was the highest sometime in the 1800s. They say that if you get hurt back here and you need medical assistance that it could take six to eight hours for them to get you and take you out of here. Makes you wonder where that goes to. When they say this is an extended tour, they're not kidding. So this is how we crawl out of here. This is the entrance to Mammoth Cave. We are on our way out. A wonderful cave tour. This is the entrance to Mammoth Cave. So we are packing up, we're getting ready to go. Fred is doing his last tour and as soon as he gets back, uh, we're out of here. But something that I noticed, so we're in site 94 and right across from us is site 93 right here. And then right up there, I'm not sure what site that is, but those seem to be two sites in this park that have electric water and it almost it looks like sewer hookups too so uh i did not know that uh, matter of fact i was under the impression that no sites out here had electric but those two do i believe probably because they are adjacent to the camp store in the uh, shower area which is right over here so um, if you come here, try to get site 93 or this, this other one that's right up here if you want electric. I sure wish I would have known that those two sites had electric because I would have snagged them. We've made our reservations well in advance. I, I could have easily have gotten those two sites had I known. This is out the side of site 94. It's pretty heavily wooded through here. And there is a site right next to us, right here. This is the turnaround or the pull through, but no one has been in that site the entire time that we've been here, which is nice. So we left Mammoth Cave National Park and we are now heading towards Sterling State Park in Michigan. And on the way is this um, National Memorial. This was the birthplace of Abraham Lincoln. So this is the Knob Creek unit. This was Lincoln's boyhood home. This is where he actually grew up. He moved here when he was around two. Uh, his birthplace is about 20 minutes from here. We actually meant to stop there, but we accidentally passed it. It's a national memorial. So this is just, this is where he grew up from the age of two. They said that he planted fields here and, you know, played around the grounds. But this is, says Knob Creek Tavern Visitor Center. It closes at four. It's only open from 10 to four. Would probably be pretty interesting to go in there. But the town that we drove through before we came here um, was Abraham Lincoln everything at Lincoln Bank. Um, there was a big uh, statue of Abraham Lincoln in the middle of the town. And this road right here is Lincoln Memorial Byway. Yesterday, after we checked out of Mammoth Cave National Park, we checked into La Quinta. Uh, it was a really nice hotel. Um, they served a great breakfast. It was super clean. We were able to give the dogs a bath and us a bath and get regrouped, uh, ready to head to Sterling State Park. We're just outside of Lexington right now. So after your tour yesterday, I committed a real sin. What'd you do? I bought a cup, one scoop of that bourbon crunch ice cream. And from the time I left the uh, visitor center to the time I arrived at camp, it was all gone, baby. 